Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all in our channel Best Notes Tutorials. I hope all the hardworking candidates are ready for the MCQs. Till now, we have completed 13 videos on MCQs and uh, I wish all the candidates all the best for the examination. Let's prepare genuinely for the exam. So let's begin with today's MCQs. And today we have taken up day 14th MCQ. Let's begin. But let me tell you that in MCQs, if you require any kind of help and any confusion is there regarding highlighters or any option, do let me know. I will clear all your doubts. Let's begin with question number one. Immersions, the American scholar refers to your options are option a a sheer option b a recluse option c a man thinking and option d a preacher so here your answer is option c a man thinking american scholar immersion's american scholar refers to a man thinking okay keep this thing in mind let's see the highlighters The American scholar was a speech given by Ralph Waldo Emerson on August 31st, 1837 to the Phi Beta Kappa Society of Harvard College at the first Paris in Cambridge in Cambridge in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Question number two. Identify the character of whom Jane Austen said, a heroine whom no one but myself will like. Option A, Elizabeth. Option B, Emma. Option C, Fanny Price. And option D, Jane. So here your option A is option B, that is Emma. Let's see the highlighters. Emma by Jane Austen is a novel about youthful Herbris and Romantic Misunderstandings. This was published in the year 1996. If we talk about the setting, it is Southern England and Yorkshire during early 19th century. And it is a romantic novel. It's a romance. Question number three. The Lotus is a poem dealing with the struggle between Option A, the rose and the lotus Option B, the lily and the rose Option C, the lily and the lotus And Option D, all the flowers So here your Option A, that is the rose and the lotus is correct option The poem The Lotus is from Dutt's Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan in the year 1882. It is a type of fable. The Lotus it uh, is a Patarjan sonnet. I hope you, you all know that there are three types of sonnets. Shakespearean, Patarkican and Spencerian. Okay, so it is Patarkan sonnet. 14 line in length with enclosed rhymes in the octave first 8 lines of the poem it is called octave okay and uh, if you see the rhyme scheme it is a b b a a b b a c d c d d c okay so this is about question number 3 question number 4 Shakespeare has no heroes but only heroines. Who said this? Option A. Philip Wilwright. Option B. Maud Maudkin. Option C. Rushkin. And Option D. Francis Ferguson. So here your option C is correct. That is Ruskin. John Ruskin. Let's see the highlighters. John Ruskin is an English art critic of the Victorian age. He was born on 8th February 1819 
at Brunswick Square. He died on 20th January 1900 at Brantwood, United Kingdom. Question number 5. In Break, 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 Tennyson mourns the death of his friend. Option A. Edward King. Option B. Arthur Hallam. Option C. Scholar Gypsy. And Option D. Keats. So here, Arthur Hallam is your correct answer. That is, Arthur Hallam was mourned in the poetry in Break, Break, Break by Tennyson. Break, Break, Break is a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. It was written in 1835 and published in 1842. It is an elegy. Elegy means when somebody writes poetry while mourning about somebody's death, especially beloved one. Okay, Descri It describes Tennyson's feeling of feelings of loss, his feelings of isolation while at Mabel Thorpe Lincolnshire. It is 18 line poetry. Question number six. Who married Cordelia in Shakespeare's King Lear? Option A. Edmund. Option B. Edgar. Option C. King of France. And option D. Hopkins. So here option C that is King of France is correct. King Lear is a tragedy written by William Shakespeare. It tells the tale of a king and talks about his three daughters. Three daughters' names are Goneril, okay, Ragan, and Cordelia. Goneril is eldest daughter. Duke of Albany was her husband. Ragan was second daughter. And Duke of Cornwall was her husband. And Cordelia youngest daughter of the royal family she was married by king of france it has five acts in the play let's move to question number seven the victorian age produced two great poets who are they option a keats and john option b robert and keats option c Coleridge and Saudi. Then comes option D, Tennyson and Browning. So here, option D, that is Tennyson and Browning, is correct. Alfred Tennyson was born on 6th August 1809 at Somerby, United Kingdom. He died on 6th October 1892 at Langeshall. United Kingdom. Robert Browning was born on 9th May 1812 at Walworth, London, United Kingdom. He died on 12th December 1889 at Ca Rezonico, Venice, Italy. Let's move ahead. Question number 8. Tennyson's to Virgil's, Virgil is an ode, a sonnet, a ballad and a lyric. Here it is an ode. To Virgil, written at the request of the Manuans for the 19th century of Virgil's death. Question number 9. A.K. Ramanujan's obituary is one of the death of, is one the death of his, option A, mother, father, grandfather and mother. Here your option is option B, that is father. A.K. Ramanujan's ob obituary is on the death of his father. Question numbers. Question number A, sorry, nine's highlighters. Let us see. 
The poem obituary was written by A. K. Ramanujan. It is quite ironical. Obituary means a notice of death in a newspaper, including a brief biography. The poem is written on the death of his father. The poem talks how his death affected family and what he achieved in his life. It has only eight stanzas. Question number 10. The author of A School for Scandals is Option A. Bernard Shaw Option B. Oscar Wilde Option C. Ben Johnson and Option D. None of them. Here, none of the answers are correct. Okay. Let's see who is the true writer. The School for Scandal is a comedy of manners written by Richard Brinsley Sheridan, first performed in London at Drury Lane Theatre on 8 May 19, sorry, 1777. Number 11. Two Leaves and a Bud is a novel by Option A. R. K. Narayan Option B. Mulkraj Anand Option C. Anita Desai and Option D. None of them. But answer is here with us and that is option B. Mulkraj Anand. Mulkraj Anand has written two leaves and a bud. Mulkraj Anand is an Indian writer in English, one of the pioneer of Indo-Anglian fiction. He was born on 12th December 1905 at Peshawar, Pakistan. It was when India was not divided and he died on 28th September 2004 at Jahagir Hospital, Pune. Let's move ahead. Elizabethan Bennett in sorry Elizabeth Bennett there is error out here Elizabeth Bennett okay Elizabeth Bennett in Pride and Prejudice is dash daughter of Mrs. Bennett option A first option B second option three third and option D fourth so here it is second. Elizabeth Bennet, Elizabeth who is the protagonist of the story Pride and Prejudice is the second daughter of the family. Let's see the highlighters. Pride and Prejudice is a romance, romantic novel of manners write, uh, sorry, written by Jane Austen in 1813. Elizabeth Bennet, the second old eldest of the Bennet daughters and Jane Bennett, the eldest Bennett sister. Then comes Mary Bennett, the middle Bennett, Catherine Bennett, the fourth Bennett daughters, and Lydia Bennett, the youngest Bennett sister. So altogether, there were five sisters. Okay, Elizabeth, Jane, Mary, Catherine, and Lydia. Out of these five, Elizabeth is the main protagonist. Question number 13. Who among the following to whom stated that he was a prose Shakespeare? Option A. Charles Lamb to Middleton. Option B. Elite to Haywood. Option B. Sorry, option C, Charles Lamb to Haywood and option D, Middleton to Haywood. So here option B, that is Charles Lamb to Hedden, sorry, Haywood is correct. John Lidwick Tricks called him the model of a light and rare talent and Charles Lamb wrote that he was a prose Shakespeare. Professor Ward, one of Haywood's, from sympathetic editors pointed out that Haywood had a keen eye for dramatic situations and great construction constructive skill but his power of characterization were not 
on a par with his stagecraft, he delighted in what he called merry accident, that is, in coarse broad farce, his fancy and inventions were exhaustible. Sorry, inexhaustible. Let's move to question number 14. Ralph Roster Doster was written by Option A. Thomas Norton Option B. John Haywood Option C. Thomas Sackville and Option D. Nicholas Udall So here your option D is correct that is Nicholas Udall Let's see the highlighters Nicholas Udall, an English playwright, cleric and uh, schoolmaster, clerk and schoolmaster. The author of Ralph Royster Doister, generally regarded as the first comedy written in first, sorry, written in English language. He was born on 1504 and he died on 23rd December 1556. Let's move to next question. Question number 15. The Country Wife is a play by William Wycherley, option B, Thomas Gray, option C, William Congreve, and option D, George Chaucer. Here, your option A, that is William Wycherley, is correct answer. Highlighter says, the Country Wife, Comedy of Manners, in five acts by restoration dramatist William Wycherley, performed and published in 1675. Please remember, you can take the keyword W of wife, W of William, W of Wycherley. So, these are the three W's which will give you key hook to remember this, okay? Question number 16. The spider and the bee episode occurs in Option A. The Battle of Books Option B. Gulliver's Travels Option C. Mall Flanders and Option D. Tom Jones So here your option A that is the Battle of Books is correct option. Here we find the episode of the spider and the bee. Okay, the spider and the bee it occurs in the Battle of Books. Let's see the highlighters. The Battle of Books is the name of a short satire written by Jonathan Swift and published as part of Prolegomena to his A Tale of a Tub in 1704. Brilliantly conceived and skillfully presented, the episode of the spider and the bee in the Battle of the Books is a glorious piece of literature. Friends, keep in mind that Jonathan Swift's A Tale of Tub is very uh, much uh, famous and it is extremely important topic for UGC net uh, preparators and uh, for this I have made a video also in our channel in this very channel you can go through that for the detailed explanation let's move ahead question number 17 Lockwood is a character in Shirley, option B, Jane Ayer, option C, Willett, and option D, Wuthering Heights. Here, your answer is Wuthering Heights. Lockwood we find in Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights is a novel by Emily Bronte, which was published in 1847, and her pseudonym is Ellie Bell, Ellis Bell. Friends, Pseudonyms were used by female writers in that era because female writers were regarded as very much emotional rather than realistic. Therefore, in order to get their writings published, they had to use pseudonym. That is what Emily Bronte had done. Okay, let's move to question number 18. In which novel of Charles Dickens does the character... Uriah Heap appear. 
great expectations option b hard times option c jane eyre and option d david copperfield so here charles dickens novel david copperfield has the character of uriah heep let's see the highlighters what it says uriah heep is a fictional character created by charles dickens in his novel which was published in 1850 and name of the novel is david copperfield heep is one of the main antagonists of the novel antagonist means villain okay opposite of hero villain his character is notable for his cloying humility un courteousness and insincerity making frequent references to his own humbleness let's move to the next question that is question number 19 elizabeth browning wrote option a heart of darkness option b the wretched of the earth option c discourse of discourse on colonialism option d sonnets from the proto portuguese so here option d that is sonnet from the portuguese is the correct answer let's see the highlighters sonnet from the portuguese was written by elizabeth barrett browning between 1845 and 46 which is published in the year 1850 it is collection of 44 love sonnets written for her then future husband robert browning question number 20 george bonnard saw influenced by charles dickens richard wagner absen all of the above so here your answer is all of the above he was influenced by charles dickens richard wagner ibsen etc there were other writers who were influenced by him and they are henrik ibsen frederick nietzsche charles dickens karl marx henry david thoreau g k chesterton joseph stalin arthur scopenha Richard Wagner, William Morris, W. S. Gilbert, Henry George, and Henry George. Question number twenty-one. The story "The Selfish Giant" is written by option A. Oscar Wilde, option B. Tolstoy, option C. Hans Andersen, and option D. Catherine Mansfield. So here your option A, that is Oscar Wilde, is correct answer. Let's see the highlighters. Oscar, final O. Flaherty, Villa Wilde, an Irish poet and playwright. He was born on sixteenth October eighteen fifty four, at Westland Row, Dublin, Ireland. He died on thirtieth November nineteen hundred in Paris, France, and he belongs to atheism. Okay, period of. atheism question number 22 the bear and the squirrel game is referred to in the play strife waste look back in anger none of them it is of course look back in anger the bear and the squirrel game in look back in anger signifies the conjugal relationship of jimmy porter and alison okay this was written by john osborne look back in anger was written by john osborne okay question number 23 mary turner is the protagonist in the novel option a sand castle option b the grass is singing next is tom jones and option d is a strife so here your option b the grass is singing is the correct option mary turner is the protagonist who is found in the grass is singing the grass is singing is the first novel published in 1950 by british novel prize winner 
author Doris Lessing. It takes place in southern Rhodesia in South Africa during the 1940s. It deals with the racial politics between whites and the blacks in that country. So here, as we know that Africa, which was occupied by colon, uh, colonial people, uh, which was which were which was made colonies by different people, and blacks were treated as slaves by whites. Okay, so the <coughs> novel talks about the same. Question number twenty-four. The Ambassadors is written by Samuel Butler, option B, Graham Greene, option C, Howells, and option D, Henry James. Henry James. Here, option D, that is Henry James, is correct answer. Henry James is an American author who was born on 15th April 1843 in New York, United States. He died on 28 February 1916 in Chelsea, London, United Kingdom. Question number 25. Billy Biswas is a protagonist in the novel by V. S. Nagpal, option B, Arun Josi, option C, Tagore, and option D, none of the above. So here, option B, that is Arun Josi, is the correct option. Arun Joshi is an Indian writer. He is known for his novel, The Strange Case of Billy Biswas and the Apprentice. Friends, by this we have completed Day 14's MCQs. If you wish to get all these things, all these notes in PDF form, and if you want to join our WhatsApp group, please message us in the number which is being displayed here. Okay, so we will meet in our next video. Till then, prepare well and do let us know how is your preparation going on for the upcoming examination. All the best to all the candidates from depth of my heart. Thank you. Hello my dear friends. I welcome you all to our channel which is best notes tutorials and till now we have been practicing sincerely for the examination and uh, we have completed day 14th mcqs so today i will move towards day 15 and please prepare sincerely if you wish to give get through examination because preparing very casually is not going to help you all Alright, so let's begin with today's MCQ and from our channel, we wish you all all the very best for your preparations and the examination. Thank you. Let's begin. Question number one. The main character of Things Fall Apart, the proud and tempestuous Okonkuo is defined early in the novel by his relationship with his father, Unoka. Which of these best describes their relationship? Option A. Okonkwo is embarrassed by the lazy Unoka, who is widely considered a failure. Option B. Unoka died when Okonkwo was an infant and Okonwo is haunted by his memory. Option C is Unoka disapproves of Okonkwo's lack of advancement in the village and is pressurizing, pressuring him to emulate the family's traditional success. Option D says Okonkwo and Unoka are very close, hunting together and exercising great power in village politics. Here, your option A is correct. That is, Okonkwo is embarrassed by the lazy Unoka who is widely considered a failure. Let's see the highlighters, friends. In Chapter 3, Unoka goes to an oracle to ask why his harvests have always been so poor and why 
he has been so unlucky so here angrily the oracle replies that unoka is lazy not unlucky instead of journeying far and instead of journeying far and wide to cultivate virgin fields like his better off neighbors unoka has stayed close to home and plowed exhausted land okonwo's okonwo's drive throughout the rest of the novel can be largely attributed to his resolve to redeem himself for his scenes of being unoka's son let's move ahead question number 2 Throughout the book an unusual currency is used for most transactions what is this unlikely coin of realm option a british shillings option b palm seeds option c polished agrates option d cowries so here cowries are the correct answer is the correct answer sorry throughout the book an unusual currency that is cowries is used for the most transactions which is the unlikely coin of the realm here it is cowries okay cowries are small hard shells originally carried by british ships as ballast when sailing back to england from india during the slave trade these shells gradually came to be used as currency in west africa in the period after that in which the novel is set the british administration gradually converted its african colonies to the pound sterling so here friends cowries which were taken from india had become a means of transaction and uh, we can understand the treachery of britishers by this that not even cowries were left okay untouched they wanted to extract each and everything and from india they had taken into another colony that is africa okay so let us not go to indian history here so whatever is important we will limit our knowledge to that for now the rate of exchange between the pound and the cowries was so poor that new forms of indian currency including the one tenth penny had to be introduced the main political unit in things fall apart is the alliance of nine villages including okonkwo's village of umofia following the murder of one of umofia's women identified in the text only as udo's wife Okonko negotiates a peace with Umofia's enemies wherein they will they will send Udo's a virgin as compensation and give up one of their young boys as well the boy Ikemefuna becomes a part of Okonko's household even calling Okonpo father what ends up happening to ikeme fiona okay this is question number 3 let's see the highlight uh, options he eventually becomes king of nine villages leading them in revolt against the british option b the oracle decrees decree decrees that he must die and okonwo kills him option c he turns traitor against okonwo's and umofia leading to the collapse of the alliance option d he dies of malaria so here option c option b is correct that is the oracle decrees that he must die and okonwo kills him okay here o oracle means the one who can tell about our past and future okay Let's see the highlighters. Okonwo is repeatedly cautioned to have no part in the killing, but he goes along with the death party out of a sense of commitment to tradition, eventually landing the death blow. 
Next highlighter says, The significance of this plot point is debatable. It is perhaps most telling that Ikemefuna's death causes Okonwo's son, perhaps representative of the new generation, to question the brutality of some of their native traditions, including the abandonment of twins to die in the evil forest. Let's move to question number 4. In chapter 8, Okonwo is having Okonwo is having a discussion with several of his villagers men. One of them, Obierika, remarks that in two other villages, that is Abam and Aninta, titled men climb trees and pound food for their wives, tasks seen as women's work in Omofua, Okonwo replies that in some tribes the children belong to the wife and her family. A proportion, a third man, Machi, dismisses as ludicrous. Obierika in concludes this decision with a tall tale. He has heard that there are your option to fill this blank is option A giant villages sculpture sculpted of red stone in a land across the sea option b great steel birds which shore without flapping their wings option c white men white like this piece of chalk who have no toes option c huge metal canoes that carry dozens of men and tons of food. Here option C that is white men, white like piece of white like this piece of chalk, who have no toes, can be filled here that there are white men, white like this piece of chalk, who have no toes. Okay, let's move ahead. Let's see the highlighters. In teaching, things fall apart. One idea that many of my students have come away with is that pre-colonial African thought that there was the only way to do things and that culture alien to them did not exist. In this passage, Akbe demonstrates that his character do have some grasp of diversity, including the concept of metri lineal descent common to many African cultures. Even though these characters doubt that such creatures as white men exist, as Okonko puts it, the world is large. Let's move to question number 5. Chapter 13 sees Okonwo banished from Umofia for killing someone. What were the circumstances of his of this homicide? Option A. Okonwo leads a raid against another of nine villages in occurring the wrath of even his own kinsmen. Option B. Okonwo kills a British colonial officer and he is banished lest the British take revenge. Option C says Firing off a gun at the funeral of village elder Izeudu to celebrate his great life, Okonwo accidentally kills Izeudu, Izeudu's son. Enraged by how slowly she does her household course, Okonwo kills his wife. Here option C, that is firing off a gun at the funeral of village elder Izeudu, to celebrate his great life, Okonwo accidentally kills Izudu's Ezudu, son, son is correct option. Let's read the highlighters. Perplexingly, it is not a bullet that does the killing. A piece of metal flies off the gun's carbine, hitting the boy in the heart. 
Though there is no British involvement in this episode, the British revenge scenario is played out in Chapter 15, which sees the British massacre a whole village for the death of one missionary. Question number six: The British, the first British evangelist in the area, Mr. Brown, callously disregards local customs, learning nothing of Umofia's traditional spirituality while imposing his own. Fittingly, his church collapses a victim of the spirit in Umofia's taboo area, the evil forest area, the evil forest. Option A, true or option B, false. So here, this statement is false. Let's see the highlighters for this question. This disregard is another of the curious idea. My students seem to carry away from a cursory reading of this novel. In fact, Mr. Brown becomes very knowledgeable regarding the local religion and customs, debating things like the nature of God with the elders of Eumophia in chapter 21. Edward Said's Edward Said's book, Orientalism, extrapolates on how many Europeans made great studies of the area they colonized using this knowledge, according to Said, as a tool in their domination of the colonial peoples. Further, though Brown does build this church in evil forest, the church actually flourishes frustrating the village elders who felt sure that the evil forest would bring it down. Question number 7. Mr. Brown is succeeded by Mr. Smith, who is contrast to Brown, is much more open and understanding, making much greater allowance for native customs. Is it true or false? Here it is false. It is because, let's see the highlighters, then it will be clear. Quite the opposite of true, quite the opposite is true. Smith is disgusted by Brown's loose interpretation of Christianity, observing that many of his many of his converts are unfamiliar with church orthodoxy. He condemns many native practices, including the ritual mutilation of babies born to women whose previous child had been stillborn as work of the devil. A recurrent motif of things fall apart is the assumption of divine roles by the worthy men of the village. These men wear masks representing figures like the evil forest and the tree spirit and Take the collective title, e.g. Wu, at the annual feast of the Earth Deity. A Christian convert named Enoch shows his disregard for the Igvugno, Igvugvu, sorry, by ripping off one of their masks. How do they Igvugvu retaliate for this offense? Option A. They do not. They Trust that their god Chukwu will deliver justice. Option B, they kill Enoch, Enoch and Mr. Smith. Option C, they burn down Enoch's compound and the church. Option D, they take all the sacred fixtures from the church and ritually discredit them. Here, option C, that is, they burn down Enoch's compound and the church is the correct option. Interestingly enough, Akbe portrays a smith in what could be called a positive light throughout this tribulation. Though his instinct is to bolt the scene, he remains in the church and tries to defend it, albeit non-violently. It may be important to note that this book was written in 
1959, while Martin Luther was leading nonviolent civil rights marches in the United States, though I am unaware of any scholarship suggesting that Akbe had this on his mind when describing Smith's actions. Though his instinct is to bold the scene, sorry, let's move to next point. Question number nine, we are going to start now. Various legal struggles with the British administration, including the capture of several of Eumophia's leaders, including Oconquo and the leveling, sorry, and the leveling of heavy fines, a meeting is called in the master marketplace to organize opposition to these depredations. Five British court messengers arrive to break up this assembly. What action does Oconquo take? Option A. He kills one of the court messengers, but his people allow the others to escape. Option B. He disbands the meeting and converts to Christianity. Option C. He leads a revolt, capturing the court messenger and ransoming them. Option D. He negotiates as peace where the British will leave the area in exchange for an annual tribute. Here, option A, that is, he kills one of the court messenger, but his people allowed the others to escape. This is your correct option. Okay. Let's go through the highlighters now. Realizing that his people will not resist the British, Oconquo walks away in silence. When the district commissioner arrives the next day, the soldiers Oconquo has hung himself. Question number 10. The novel concludes with the British District Commissioner contemplating Oconquo's life, remarking to himself that it would make for a fascinating paragraph in his upcoming book, The Pacification of Primitive Tribes of the Lower Niger. Here, the statement is true or false. Your answer should be true. Okay. Let's see the highlighters. <clears throat> At the turn of the century, during the apex of the scam scramble of Africa and the height of European colonial power worldwide, colonial administrators wrote numerous studies with titles just as dispassionate as this, including Pagan Races of the Malay Peninsula by Walter Skeet and the Lower Niger and its tribes by Arthur Leonard, both from 1906. These books do offer a wealth of data about native customs, but may reveal even more about the attitude of the Europeans towards their colonial subjects. Question number 11. What is the name of Okonpo's wife? Option A. Oji Ugo. Option B, Ezingma. Option C, Equify. And option D, none of these. So here, answer is none of these. Highlighter says, Okonko's first wife is never named in the book, only being referred to as Noyo's mother. Equify is Okonkwo's second wife and his favorite, he is, he in fact stole her from another man. This is seen to be one of the reasons why Okonkwo is so unlucky. Enigma and Equify's daughter, Okonkwo's favorite child, Ojiogo is Okonkwo's third and final wife, who is seen in the book to be 
beaten during the sacred week of peace. Nyoi is Nyoi is Okonkwo's favorite son. Is it true or false? It is false. Here we see Okonkwo always thought that Nyoi was very weak, much like Onoka. Onoka's sorry, Okonkwo's own father. For this, he disliked him and when Nyoi converted to Christianity later in the book, Okonkwo was furious even saying that Okonko was not worth fighting for. That is why this statement is false. Let's move ahead. Question number 13. What is the name of the boy who was brought to Okonko's as a sacrifice? Option A. Izeudu. Option B. Nyoi. Option C. Ike Me Funa. And Option D. Maduka. So here option C that is Ime, Ime Funa. Ike Me Funa is correct. Highlighter says, Ike Mufuna was brought to Okonkos to look after until it was time for him to be killed. Indeed, it was Okonkos himself who drew his machete and cut him down. Even though he liked Ike Mufuna and they saw each other as wife, as father and son. Ike Mufuna was very important because after his death, Nyoi began to question the way the tribe did things, a contributing factor to his conversation to sorry conversion to Christianity. Question number fourteen. This is this character is violent and aggressive, with a very flexible mind. He often takes out his anger on members of his family, but hides away any womanly emotions. This character fits the description. Which character fits the description? Here your options are Okonkwu, Okonwo, Okagbu, none of the above. Here Okonkwo is the correct option. Let's see the highlighters. Okonkwo's character can be described as him being incredibly horrible. However, you can understand the reason for him being like this. He is trying not to be like his father. Even though Okonkwo has his flaws, there are moments in the novel where he is seen to have good points too, such as the fact that he does not care for his family when he goes to get a zingma back from Chiolo and that he makes people feel safe when he is around. Question number 15. What does Inoch do with which enrages the tribe? He unmasks an Ekwoknu. He kills Okonvo's wife. He eats a locust. He burns down the church. Here option A is correct. That is he unmasks an Ekwoknu. Let's go through the highlighter to make it more clear. This is a huge offense as the tribe believe that when the Ikwogwo is unmasked, the spirit is killed. That is why this was offense. Okay, let's move to question number 13. Who is not a character in the novel? Option A. H. Hendu, Chinua, Izeudu and Isaac. Here Chinua is the odd option here. So this is the answer. Here, let's see the highlighters. Shinwa is the author's first name. He is not a character in the novel, although the character of Okonko is supposedly based upon his grandfather. Ichewundu is Okonko's uncle. Izeudu is the old man who died in the novel. And Isaac is the Christian name on Ovoi chooses after he converts. So here, Shinwa is not the character but the writer's first name okay what is the name of okonpo's close friend uchendu obiorika okonpo is seudu here option b that is obiorika is correct 
Obirika visits Okonpo when he has to go to his motherland in exile to tell him of the news at home. He is very loyal to Okonpo right to the end, even when he was committed suicide. He has committed suicide, which is seen as a sin in the eyes of the tribe. Question number 19. What kind of government is described in the book? An anarchist no, uh, government, a socialist government, a totalitarian government, and a capitalist government. So here, totalitarian government is mentioned in the book. Totalitarian government are one where the state regulates the aspect of public and private life. Okonpo wrote 1984 with Stalinist Russia and Nazi Germany in mind, both considered totalitarian. Let's move to next question number 19. What is the full title of a modest proposal? A modest proposal for maximizing the usefulness of the poor children of Ireland and for providing a means to regulate the economy. Option B says, a modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people in Ireland from being a burden to their parents or country and for making them beneficial to the public. Option C says, a modest proposal for improving the living standards in Ireland and for relieving the poor people in Ireland of their unwanted children. Option D Option D is a modest proposal for feeding the hungry, clothing, clothing the needy, sheltering the homeless and enriching the poor people of Ireland. Here option B is correct. That is a modest proposal for preventing the children of poor people in Ireland and uh, from being a burden to their parents or country and for making them beneficial for public, for the, to the public. Okay, so this is correct option. Let's go through the highlighters to make the concept clear. When Jonathan Swift wrote A Modest Proposal in 1729, there was widespread poverty throughout Ireland and especially in Dublin. Swift wrote A Modest Proposal is an, as an alternative suggestion to all of the other failed suggestions by experts. Question number 20. Of the following, which is not one of the common options chosen by the children of Ireland? Option A. Become factory workers. Option B. Fight for the pretender in Spain. Option C. Become thieves. Option D. Sell themselves to the Barbados. Here, option A is correct, that is, become factory workers. Highlighter says, many Irish people enlisted in the French and Spanish armies and immigrated to Barbados in the 70s. As with many poor economic thievery increased as the number of available jobs decreased. Question number 21. How did... How old did Swift recommend children be before they become a modest proposal? Option A, 6 months. Option B, 2 years. Option C, 1 year. Option D, 4 years. Option C, that is 1 year, is the correct answer. In the story, Swift mentions that a child can be brought up almost entirely on a mother's milk for about 1 year. If tolerably nursed, the child should weigh 28 pounds at one year of age. Question number 22. Of the 1,20,000 children annually born in Dublin at the time, how many did Swift suggest should be used for the modest proportion? Option A, 1,20,000. Option B, 5,000. Option C, 10,000. Option D, 1 lakh. So here, option D is correct, that is 1 lakh. 
the other 20000 children would be used for breeding of the 1 lakh children being consumed under the modest proposal 20000 of them would be for dublin and the remaining 80000 for the rest of the ireland question number 23 what was the ethnicity of the person who told the narrator that a young healthy child is a most delicious nourishing and wholesome food option a american option b italian option c spanish and option d english so here answer is american the american told the narrator that he had tried stewed roasted baked and boiled varieties question number 24 what did the narrator recommend as the selling price for a beggar's child option a 10 shillings option b 20 shillings option c 100 shillings and option d 3 shillings here option a that is 10 shillings is the correct answer the highlighter says since the cost of raising a child was only about 2 shillings each poor family should make 8 shillings from the each child they give to the modest proposal okay let's move to the last question option d who has translated derrida's of grammatology into english option a ranjit guha option b homi bhaba option c gayatri spivak and option d ijaz ahmed so here option c that is gayatri spivak is the correct answer Gayatri Chakraborty Spivak is an Indian scholar, literary theorist, and feminist critic. She was born on twenty fourth February nineteen forty two at Baliganj, Kolkata. Friends, by this I have completed question answers of MCQs of day fifteen as well. So I hope your concept is clear. If not, do drop messages in the comment section. i will surely try to explain it so that it will be clear to you all if you wish to get notes just drop a message in this number i will surely reply to you all thank you so much all the best